I've got five tips to improve at one of the most fun and beginner-friendly gods, Kukul Khan. We're going to give you an example build, jump into some of his abilities, and then go into some tips to improve your gameplay drastically on Kuku. Now, if you want to skip ahead to any of these sections, there are timestamps down below. And while you're down there, why not like and subscribe to this video? It really helps the channel out and lets me know you want more of these sort of guide content on the channel. The first tip, as always, is going to be the build. If you just want a super quick build, try Pendulum of Ages, Book of Soft, Spear of Magus, Karen's Coin, Polynomicon, and Soul Reaver. But that build will only be viable for a few patches, if that, I'm sure. The my team regularly balance items and make new items, completely shifting up metas. So let me give you a little insight into why we're picking each of these items, so as the metas change, you can still keep on track. As far as a starting item goes, you'll likely want to pick whatever is meta, but for this and for any item changes in future, just remember that magic power and maximum mana are great stats for Google Khan. Book of Thoth does exactly this for us. It is power, mana, and then even more power conversion, doubling down on the passive, which we'll get into in a little bit. This is almost a must build for Kuku Khan, and the only reason you wouldn't build it is if the meta build is so overpowered that you have to use the meta items and nothing else. Next up, we grab our armor penetration. Typically, you want to get what is called flat pen, which is just a normal number first. And then you'll want to get your percentage pen, which, as you might guess, is a percentage stat for magical penetration after. The former will help you deal damage early on against God's natural protections, while the latter is required later on in the game to even remotely phase tanks once they have some items online. Polynomicon is another must build for Kuku Khan, although in many metas it might not be too useful, sadly. And those tend to be metas where Kuku himself struggles. We'll go into this more in tips 2 and 3, but Polynomicon basically gives you a super powered basic attack after casting an ability, which is great follow up for Zephyr, your first ability, as it deals damage and slows the enemy, making it really easy to hit that overcharged attack. Finally, you want your luxury item. Currently, that is Soul Weaver, as all gods were given a bonus to maximum health, and so the item that deals percentage of maximum health damage has got a, a lot stronger. But this could equally be a pure power item such as Rod of Tehuti, or something a bit more utility based like the Staff of Mermidon. Okay, so now we've got you a build to get started with, you'll need to know what the hell your abilities do, which is our second tip. Kuku Khan's passive is the power of the Wind Duel. I guess you can tell he's an older god, right? <laughs> it is a very simple passive though, and it is core to how Kuku plays. It increases your magical power by 4%, of your maximum mana. So building items that grant you max mana actually gives Cuckoo bonus power, making him hit that much harder. And it is why, as we've covered, that Book of Thoth is almost always a must build item for Cuckoo. Cuckoo Khan's first ability is Zephyr. This is a long and thin projectile, kind of like a wide auto attack that stops on the first enemy hit, slowing them and dealing damage. The important thing to remember with this ability, and again, is more important with the items that you get, is that you can weave in this auto attack after firing the ability for free, as the slow makes it almost impossible for the enemy to dodge it. Of course, you could also use your slow to make it easier to hit your third and fourth abilities, but we will get into those later. Kuku Khan's second ability is Slipstream. When activated, he becomes a little squiggly noodle, granting himself extra movement speed for a short few seconds, and becomes immune to slows for an even shorter duration. This is the closest thing to an escape or movement ability that you have, so use it wisely. Otherwise, you might find yourself as food for your enemies. Koko Khan's third ability is Whirlwind. You summon a circular area of rapid winds, a tornado you might say, that will latch on to any enemy. Any enemy god or minion that is caught by this Whirlwind will have a smaller tornado appear on them, dealing a significant amount of damage over time. This will be the first ability you put points into, as it is your main way to clear minion waves. It is a super safe way to farm, as you can drop this and move back to safety, letting the tornado do the work, and not trying to overuse your slipstream. Finally, we have Kuku Khan's ultimate, Spirit of the Nine Winds. Kuku Khan summons a giant snack spirit that charges in a long line, starting just behind you and carry on way into the distance. Any enemy that is hit by this will be knocked to the side and take a massive amount of damage. Just the raw stats are 800 plus 120% of your power at the end of the game, which is huge, especially 
when we consider that we're gaining extra power from mana thanks to our passive. Now my next tip is to always go over the god's bread and butter. This is sort of the, the go-to combo, the one-two punch, the thing you're going to be getting the most value out of throughout the game. In the case of Kuku Khan, this is his first ability, Zephyr, setting up basically anything else. If you recall Polynomicon from tip 1, this item gave you a super-powered basic attack after you cast an ability. This is the ideal butter for the bread of Zephyr. If you hit your enemy with a Zephyr, chunking them a great range for a bunch of their health, and then throw up a follow-up basic attack, which is super easy to hit thanks to Zephyr slowing them, this hits them for even more damage thanks to the Polynomicon that you hopefully have. This entire time you've been at maximum auto attack range from your enemy as well, as both the auto attack and Zephyr have huge range on them, so even if they are a ranged character as well, it's unlikely they can easily return fire. And if you catch a melee target with this, there is nothing they can do to stop you. Now, once you have your Polynomicon built and you have this technique down, you become a serious threat on a super low cooldown. But even if you cannot build Polynomicon, or you don't have it yet, you can use Zephyr the same way to set up your Whirlwind or your ultimate. Tip number 4 is one that I feel like is always overlooked, and is the main thing I see new players on gods that new players get early, like Kuku Khan and Ra, doing wrong. While learning the game, figuring out what all the other gods do and what movement abilities they have, hitting a maximum range snipe with your ultimate will be very difficult. And even when you're more practiced, it becomes near impossible as other players see it coming and are ready for it. Now, don't be afraid to get a little closer to drop this. Or even more importantly, if an enemy jumps on you and your ultimate is ready, show them who's boss and hit them with a point-blank ultimate. Kuku Khan's ultimate affects an area that is wider than you and starts behind you. So no matter where you are being attacked from by a pesky assassin or warrior, Drop the ultimate when you're being jumped, and secure a huge amount of damage, probably getting you out of trouble at the same time. When you get a little more confident, feel free to use Zephyr to slow someone down, letting you catch up to them for an easy melee range ultimate. Just be careful, remember you don't have a great mobility tool, so you'll have to know your way out too. And that brings us to our final tip, one way you can create secure paths for yourself or your allies lies in this fifth and final tip for Kuku Khan. And that is to recognize your true power on the battlefield. You are the master of zone control. This is more true of the conquest map than others, but it is still relevant across the board. Your whirlwind is one of the longest lasting abilities in the game, and it really hurts, especially for squishy targets. So, if there is a choke point you don't want your enemy to come through, put your whirlwind in there. It doesn't actually have to hit the enemy god. If it keeps them from entering the fight, it may as well have killed them as the enemy will have zero impact until it's too late, the god was effectively dead anyway. Remember, your bread and butter is using Zephyr to set up your damage. Your tornado doesn't have to be the big damage dealer here. So, control the entire battlefield, set the stage, deny access to the enemy's pivotal players, and win some more games with the Windsnap. Ciao.